Good evening, everybody. Um, my name is Ashley. Uh, welcome to the AAT Qualifications 2022 webinar. Um, I'm joined by, by my colleague Shane, um, who's going to volunteer his apprenticeship knowledge um, and expertise when uh, we get to that stage of the of the of the webinar. Um, as usual, if anybody's got any questions, then please feel to feel free to fire away in the chat, and um, I'll be happy to pick them up at the end. So. If you notice anything that you're not, you know, you're not sure on or anything like that, that you maybe want us to go through, then we'll be happy to pick up on those those queries at the end and, and you know provide any feedback we can. So uh, in this webinar, we're going to discuss the imminent arrival of the AAT new syllabus. Uh, we're going to try and give feedback and, and information on how it might affect your students uh, and perhaps you as students. Um, there are a small amount of slides which we will talk through, which we'll talk a little bit about. Kind of when AQ 2022 is going to come in, um, how we're going to type it into our courses, um, when we will decide or when we will advise, if you like, to have students coming under the old syllabus, which is AQ 2016 or the new one, um, and then how it will eventually kind of replace AQ 16 as a qualification um, for good or for the next few years, nonetheless. So. Um, at that point, or, or following that, as I said, we, we will then take any questions that you have um, and, and, and we'll go from there. OK. So um, as perhaps the, the, a good starting point is to talk a little bit about when the qualification is going to come in. So I mean, as you should be able to see on, on screen there, AQ 2022 effectively begins on the 1st of February 22. So this has been pushed back. So if you've seen other dates that, you know, mentioned um, it was mid, initially mid this year and things like that due to the, um, you know, the, the pandemic and things like that, we've, we've seen it pushed back and, and obviously the net renamed as AQ22. So all registrations from the 1st of February will be under the new qualification. Now that's set by the AAT. So that's going to be compulsory. And, uh, you know, from that point, obviously, we will, we will then not be even allowed or we will not be registering anyone under the old or the current AQ 2016 syllabus, which, of course, brings about um, issues in terms of course scheduling, uh, phasing and transitions and things like that, all of which I'm going to cover on this webinar. Um, and it may well affect things like apprenticeships, too, which um, I'll bring in shame for when we get to the appropriate slide. Now, effectively, as you can see there, the kind of overlap of the two syllabus or two syllabus contents, if you like, is from the 1st of February at 22, all the way to the 30th of June 2023. Now that has been extended again. So if you've seen any other um, dates that maybe ran to the end of February 23 and things like that, then they've recently extended it with feedback from employers and, and tuition providers and students themselves, because effectively the window was, was deemed to be a bit too short. So what that gives us, if you like, as you can see, is a kind of, well, a, a 15 month overlap period through which we can get people and students through the old syllabus. And I'm happy to take any questions that you might have on that. Um, uh, as we go through. As I mentioned, um, I'll talk to you a little bit about how we're looking to schedule the courses. Uh, we've recently looked into the course scheduling for the first half of, of next year. So we will imminently be kind of sending around provisional dates and things like that. But it, it requires a little bit of tailoring because of students kind of, I suppose, enrolling at different times. Um, and I'll talk to you a bit, a little bit about kind of how maybe a student starting in September, we would have a different plan for a student starting in January and, and so on and so forth. All right. But worth kind of getting those dates in your in your diary, because obviously we will need to be aware and you will need to be aware of what students uh, and, and learners will, will enroll on what qualification, as it were. Okay. Now. In terms of the actual content, um, this might make a little bit more sense when I get to the next slide where I compare the current syllabus to the new one. But I think it's a good starting point to just talk about what the qualification will look like. And uh, it might be a little bit more useful for those of you that are familiar with the current setup. As I said in a minute, I will go through to the current 
qualification, the AQ2016 qualification, and I'll kind of map old versus new. Um, but this is the breakdown of the new syllabus. So the AQ2022 syllabus is going to look something like this. Um, and I suppose the first thing that's worth mentioning that I will come to as well later is that almost as a new thing, you can see at the bottom of that slide that the, the AAT have introduced what they call kind of core themes, if you like. Um, and what that means is that whereas so maybe something like technology or sustainability was before tested or examined in one particular unit or maybe in a few units, these themes will sit throughout. So a little bit of every single paper will have elements of technology examined, communication, uh, ethics and sustainability. Again, I'll go into more detail on that later, but um, the AAT have tried to, to communicate this to us as, as, as tuition providers, and they want us to relay this to both employers and, and students themselves, that actually, because I suppose those are quite topical areas of, of, of business and, 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 and topical commercial areas, they're saying that these will these will kind of lie within each and every unit. All right. So you, you bring, even now under the current syllabus, ethics is tested probably in the majority of papers. They're going a little bit further this time in that they're going to examine kind of four areas in, in that in that manner, if you like. Now, if I start with level two, as I said in a minute, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about how this compares to the current syllabus. Um, but there isn't an awful lot that's changing in terms of what still exists. So you can see there, there are four units um, and as a result, four exams or assessments, I should say. Um, the first one is the business environment, which is a new thing, okay, um, overlaps a little bit with uh, the kind of things that students will have seen at um, a unit called Working Effectively in Accounting and Finance and the Level 2 Synoptic, but um, feedback from, from stakeholders to the AAT was that candidates didn't necessarily have a lot of kind of business acumen, I suppose, at level two. So they're trying to introduce that a little bit more with, with a standalone unit. So it will test things like external analysis, um, you know, business opportunities and threats and that kind of thing in a little bit more detail. And then really the, the new um, names here, principles of costing, introduction to bookkeeping, and then principles of bookkeeping controls, Although they will be updated in terms of course content and specifics, you've largely there got what you already had, as you'll see on the next slide. So there's not an awful lot that's changed in terms of the, the makeup of those units. Uh, when we come through to level three, again, in a similar way, the AT is now keen for candidates to have more business and, and commercial awareness, hence the name that you've got a unit there um, entitled business awareness, and it will do a similar thing. Obviously, at a higher level, in a little bit more detail, you'll see candidates examined on, on um, you know, the strengths and weaknesses of a business, maybe the opportunities and threats it faces, quite a theoretical exam or assessment, and um, a little bit of a kind of diversion from maybe their, his, their approach historically, where things were very numerical and computational, and they're trying to expand on, upon that, if you like. Although that stuff's still there, definitely. Um, they want candidates to be able to demonstrate that business acumen a little bit more. Management accounting techniques um, exist in a different name already. Uh, management accounting costing, that again, I'll compare in a minute. You've then got a, something that didn't exist in, it, in its new form or doesn't exist in, in the form it's going to take, which is called final accounting. Now this is gonna be a, a large unit and it will actually amalgamate two existing units um, which are advanced bookkeeping and final accounts preparation. And the feedback that we've had from the AAT is that they expect that to be potentially entry level as a paper um, and oh, quite challenging, if, if, if I'm going to be quite honest, they've said that to us, that really this, you know, this is going to go through core elements of things like double entry bookkeeping. Um, it's gonna be modernized, so it'll bring in things like cloud, cloud account, cloud-based accounting and things like that. Um, uh, hence the technology kind of underlay, if you like, throughout the, the, the qualification. Um, but yeah, the, the AAT kind of see this as their, 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 their core paper at, at that level. And then like you had before, although it's perhaps not obvious from the name, you've got 
something entitled tax processes for business, which is very going to be very similar to the, the, the current indirect tax paper, um, which is for all intents and purposes of VAT assessment. All right. And then finally, we move through to level four. And um, again, a couple of changes here. Uh, the, the biggest change I'll come to in a minute will be with this, this applied management accounting unit. Um, as I'll demonstrate in a minute with the, the kind of summary of changes, aside from a kind of level end uh, synoptic assessment for most, most candidates, you now got internal accounting systems and controls, which was a key theme from that synoptic paper before. Um, but candidates will be tested here on, well, on, on, on internal control systems in the workplace, uh, risk management and the like. So uh, kind of an audit style assessment, if you like. And then what the EAT envisaged to be kind of your, your, your two core papers at level four are going to be applied management accounting, which again is going to be a big one because it merges two current units, uh, which are entitled decision and control uh, and management accounting budgeting. You've then got drafting and interpreting financial statements, which is going to be very similar to financial statements of limited companies that currently exist. And then in terms of the optional papers, they've not really changed, or they're not intending to change an awful lot in terms of the makeup. So you currently actually have those, those optional uh, units already, business tax, personal tax, audit and assurance, cash management and, and then credit management and they, they don't envisage those changing again the content will change a little bit in terms of the fact that they're going to be introducing concepts of technology sustainability and so on you know things like as i've said before cloud-based accounting will sit within many units um, but in, in terms of the actual units themselves they don't they, there's not going to be an awful lot of, of change with the optionals and as you can see um, it will be up to both, I suppose, employers and, and students themselves to determine which ones perhaps suit them best, uh, both in terms of their um, in terms of their, their employment um, background, um, potential kind of, I suppose, employment opportunities. So where they see themselves going, going further in the business and things like that. And then also maybe what suits them um, study wise as well. So it will be up to students and employers to pick two from those five options. And I'm as I am um, uh, in class, I'm always happy to give some feedback on what I think might suit certain candidates based upon their background. Okay. So that's a little bit of a summary of, of what the qualification will look like. Again, if, you, if you're not particularly familiar with um, the current setup, then this slide should perhaps help a little bit more. It's, it's probably more useful in that what it does is it compares where we currently are to where we are going. So, I mean, the units I just showed you, you can then see on the kind of in this middle column here, and it, as best it can, tries to compare the units. So I've mentioned most of these already in that, you know, you'll you perhaps be more familiar with these names on the left because it's the current syllabus. But you've got bookkeeping transactions, which will become introduction to bookkeeping and so on. And perhaps the other big changes that I haven't really mentioned uh, because they wouldn't have sat on the new syllabus content would be the fact that using accounting software is 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 being removed. So you might have heard um, maybe your, uh, your your students or as uh, as students you may be familiar with the using accounting software unit um, where you effectively demonstrate your accounting skills within accounting software. You know, we, we we use we use Sage for instance at, at First Intuition. Because going back to the previous slide, technology is now going to be a core theme throughout the qualification, the AAT are taking the stance that rather than testing it as a standalone unit, that will be tested throughout different units. And as such, they no longer see the need for that to sit within, within a unit itself, if you like. Um, with, with level two, you at the moment you have a synoptic assessment, and that synoptic assessment was or is called working effectively in, in finance so the name will be um, replaced and as I said some of the content will be replaced by the um, unit entitled the business environment that will work as the synoptic assessment for the candidates and for those of you who either are or um, have apprentices within your teams or within your organization 
that will work as um as endpoint assessment, which I will um move over to Shane for in in, in the next slide. Okay. With level three, um, as I've mentioned, the big change really is that advanced bookkeeping and final accounts prep will become one unit. Um, and then the only other thing that really I haven't necessarily mentioned yet is that the level three synoptic assessment um, will no longer sit as a as a as a as an assessment for for commercial uh, students. As such, we do have this new unit entitled business awareness. Um, but for commercial students, as I said, there, there will be no synoptic assessment. And I'm sure Shane will kind of bring this in in a minute, but it's worth me introducing that if you um, you are going to be putting apprentices through uh, the level three qualification, then they will be taking these four assessments under the qualifications 2022 column. So that's final accounting, management accounting, tax processes for business and business awareness. But they would also need to set a, set a separate synoptic assessment, um, which would sit kind of work as the endpoint assessment, if you like, or part of the endpoint assessment for their for their overall qualification. And then with level four, it's a similar situation. Um, as I said, I've mentioned that two management accounting papers will merge into one. And whereas before you had internal control sitting as part of a synoptic, that will no, long, no longer necessarily be a part of a synoptic paper, it'll be a standalone unit. And so again, for commercial candidates and students, that will not be, um, there will not be a, a synoptic assessment um, under the new qualification. But for apprentices, it would be, well, there would be five units, as you can see there. So there were there's drafting and interpreting financial statements, applied management accounting, internal accounting systems, and then two of, of, of the five options that we discussed. And then in addition to those, they would then have to sit this separate um, additional synoptic exam, as it says there on the kind of bottom right. All right, I'm, I'm, again, I'm more happy to give some further guidance on that, but, but ultimately, as you can see there in the top right, the qualifications, the new qualification, I suppose, in a way, reduces the amount of assessments for um, for for commercial candidates, but it's not really much different in terms of um, of apprentices because they would still need to come sit that that um, that additional synoptic paper. All right. Um, I'm going to move over to Shane for the next slide. So um, calling on you, Shane, for the next bit. I'll move over um, because Shane will be able to discuss the how this will affect apprentices in a little bit more detail. Over to you, Shane. Cool. Thank you, Ashley. Um, just quickly, would you mind going back one slide? No Is that all right? There we go. Thank you. Um, I'm not going to spend too long on apprenticeships tonight. It's not about apprenticeships. It's about the changes to the syllabus. But conscious that some of the people that registered for this um, take on apprentices and, and how that could affect people uh, for recruitment plans come the summer. Um, so there, there's a couple of changes that come with, with AQ22. Um, some affect the current three and four, um, which exists as an apprenticeship already. And the second is the introduction of a level two apprenticeship, um, which I'll talk about in a second. For the current level threes and fours, the biggest thing to, to bear in mind is that the AAT have still produced a qualification that maps across to the apprenticeship. So it is still embedded um, and will still cover the requirements that the government set out for apprenticeships. As Ashley's just said, there are levels three and four, um, slightly less units um, if you're a commercial learner. But the number of units if you are an apprentice stays the same because they still have to undertake that synoptic. Um, so it's not any worse for an apprentice and we would still prepare them and run the courses that we do at present, um, but it doesn't either reduce it for an apprentice either. So, so no better and, and no worse. And the reason for that is that the government set out an, an end point assessment that assesses the technical competency as a whole. Um, at, hence the reason for them still wanting to keep the synoptic in. Um, but those are the, the only differences to, to level three and four. If anybody here takes on um, apprentices that do a, a combined, so they do a level four apprenticeship and we include the level three units uh, within it, that will still be possible. Um, just keeping an eye on those registration dates, it could potentially be that the level three components, they sit under the AQ 2016, 
And when they move on to the level four, they sit those under the AQ22 so that there is no um, missing of registration dates. The last thing you'd want is an apprentice halfway for a program that then can't complete because the registration date um, comes and goes, but there are ways around that. Thanks, Ashley, would you mind just moving over? And then the second element, which I, I said about, was just the introduction of a level two apprenticeship. So it's been in the works for, for a while and it's something they've introduced um, alongside AQ22. Um, it will be available slightly earlier and it will be a shorter program as well, but it's more designed for people with very little academic or prior accounting slash finance experience. Um, and we'll focus centrally around the, the principles of, of bookkeeping and costing, as, as Ashley's mentioned. So it's not, um, it's not replacing what already exists, but it will be a standalone option for those learners that, that require the level two before moving on to level three. Um, so we do have instances where apprentices take the level three and include level two units within it, um, because there's previously never been an option to do level two as a standalone. Um, well, that now does become an option. Um, and what this slide talks through is just how those knowledge, skills and behaviours are um, developed. So it, it outlines what would need to be developed um, in very much the same way as the level threes and fours. And then provides an overview of the, the units within it. So again, the same registration um, dates apply in that anybody starting now would do it under the AQ 2016 and anybody starting next year would do it under the new units. Still has an endpoint assessment. Um, the main difference being that they that endpoint assessment um, is different to level threes and fours. So it's uh, it's an intra assessment and then a professional discussion. Whereas the level threes and fours involves um, a synoptic assessment and a professional discussion. Um, it's a shorter program as well, at thirteen months compared to the other ones, but. As I say, I'm not going to spend too long on it. Um, my job isn't here to sit here and sell apprenticeships tonight, but just worthwhile knowing that I suppose there is a second option out there now that never previously existed. Um, and that the AQ22 doesn't prevent apprenticeships being an option going forward. Um, they have worked that out so that it still will fit. And the apprentice comes out with a recognised professional qualification at the end of it still. Um, like Ashley said, feel free to pop any questions in the chat and I'll answer them as we go through. But uh, that was that was my only comments around anybody thinking of recruiting for, for September um, and just bearing in mind. Um, so back to you, Ashley. Thanks, Shane. Ooh. Brilliant. OK, so um, back to the qualification itself. Um, as I mentioned before, and I won't spend too much time on this, this slide here, um, there are four kind of recurring themes and uh, it's perhaps worth just identifying the fact, I suppose, that with the four themes I've mentioned in the, in the initial slide, you're going to see rather than these tested in standalone units or examined in standalone units, they'll now sit within multiple units. As I said, it's perhaps worth just picking a couple of examples. So whereas before, um, for instance, sustainability, um, was assessed quite thoroughly in the, or is assessed, sorry, quite thoroughly in the level three synoptic assessment. Um, and, and really just there under AQ 2016, because it's topical, because um, the AAT are, are, are conscious that they want you know, candidates to be aware of it throughout their studies, you can see there that with something like sustainability, they'll be identical, they'll be introduced to the concept of CSR, you know, our role as accountants in in in, in sustainability and in, in, in you know the public interest and all that, that that kind of stuff and that will be introduced at such an early stage now and then almost reiterated um, in level three specifically within business awareness through to then level four where you'll see it as part of internal controls and accounting systems so they see these themes as so core if you like that they want them assessed at, at multiple levels and I suppose, given the fact that you know, candidates won't necessarily, or students won't necessarily do all of the levels, um, as Shane just mentioned, and as, as we've said before, as you'll probably be aware, at least then you, when a, a, a 
somebody qualifies, you'll have somebody that is aware of and has, has been assessed on those, those aspects at whatever stage of their studies they're at. All right, but again, I'm more than happy to answer any questions on those. It's just worth identifying that whereas before they were, they were quite specifically assessed, they're now gonna be tested um, in a much more generic manner, I suppose. Um, and then this, this slide here. Now, the thing about the, the um, qualification is there are going to be overlaps. So this is perhaps a little bit um, more complex than it, it might need to be um, for an introduction. But coming back to my um, original date, from a practical point of view, and we've had this when the syllabus has changed before, what you will get is, is certain students that may um, take the first couple of units and for whatever reason, there may be a break in their studies so that then if they've done that, those initial units under the old syllabus, given the timings, they might then have to jump onto the new syllabus. That doesn't necessarily mean, well, in fact, it doesn't mean that they lose credit for the old syllabus. Now we're going to schedule dates at FI so that that is avoided where possible because you know we will we will generally have a, a somebody jumping on the entire old syllabus level three and then pretend, just as an example the new syllabus would be under level four so we would avoid any transitional assess, or transitional arrangements where necessary. This time around the AAT have made things slightly easier in that they've tried where possible to allow for what they've called direct transfers. So just to give you an example, coming back to this uh, slide here, let's just use level two as an, uh, as an example. You might have a, 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 an employee or a student that has passed bookkeeping transaction or has been assigned as competent in bookkeeping transactions under AQ16 and bookkeeping controls, but then, as I said, there's a break in their studies for a, a particular reason. If they did that under the current syllabus, and then by the time they resumed their studies, it was under the new syllabus, then as this very kind of summarized list identifies, you would get a direct transfer. So in a nutshell, you're gonna get credit for that new qualification, or that, sorry, that new unit through, through them having passed the old one. Now it is a lot more complex than that for you know partial credit and things like that. And you know. I'm happy to go through any of that should that arise. But as I said, at first intuition, we're going to try, or we will be avoiding that by making sure that the courses are scheduled to allow for a candidate to complete either under the old one, if there is enough time, or the current syllabus, I should say, if there is enough time, or if there isn't enough time, then, then enrollment would take place completely under AQ22. So in, a, in summary, we're looking to avoid transition where, where possible. But practically, you do get the odd um, case where it will be necessary, and therefore these credit and uh, um, or this credit information, these transfers might be might be relevant. Okay. Um, but as you can see, there's direct credit for bookkeeping transactions, bookkeeping controls, and elements of costing. Two units have been removed, so they would be irrelevant. And then you've got two new um, units under the um, under the new syllabus. One thing that is worth noting is that the old, the current synoptic, not that it would be relevant anyway, because you should pass that last, but the current synoptic would not um, give credit for the new one. It's a tiny bit more complex under level three um, in that these two papers here, advanced bookkeeping and final accounts prep, uh, they're gonna be amalgamated into one unit. So you'd need to pass both of them to get credit for the combined unit equivalent. Direct transfer for indirect tax. So it's pretty much the same unit under both syllabuses. Business awareness is completely new. And then this is a, a sticking point that we're going to allow for in our course scheduling anyway. But there, I, I mentioned earlier that management accounting costing will become management accounting techniques. However, there are some themes of the current synoptic that are gonna sit in this new unit. So. Again, we will allow for this with our course scheduling, but there won't be a direct transfer for the old costing unit to the new one. Um, and therefore, that we're going to need to be careful about that. And we will be with the way we schedule the courses. And, you know, we're happy to give specific feedback on any 
of your students that that might affect. Uh, and then finally, I mentioned earlier on that the two uh, management accounting units at level four are going to combine to uh, what they're going to call applied management accounting, and both of those would need to be passed to get credit for the new combined equivalent. Okay. Um, the, the, the other two units have direct direct credit, direct transfer, as they call it. Okay, I appreciate that's a lot to take in. Um, but I think rather than knowing about the specifics, that's up to us to worry about. Um, just be aware of the fact that if there are any breaks in studies, um, which obviously we look to avoid and, and support and so on, but these things happen, if that occurs, then it will just be worth considering the impact it might have because of this kind of transitional arrangement, if you like. Other than that, um, that's an, as I said, that's a lot to take in. Um, I've seen a query in the chat that mentioned um, whether these slides will be sent out. They will be, as will a recording of, of the webinar. Um, but uh, at this point, I'm happy to take in a, a bit, uh, happy to take in any questions that anybody might have, um, and either I, Shane or I can answer them if, if there are any. I can answer that one for you, Shane. Um, or not for you, but I can answer that one. Uh, thanks, Benjamin. So uh, do these changes affect the ACA and ACCA exemptions? Um, there haven't been no announcements on that yet from, from either of those, those bodies. Um, but I, I shouldn't think they will, because if anything, they're going to include more um, content than the current syllabus uh, units do. So um, we fully expect that actually the exemptions that you currently get from the AQ 2016 qualification will still exist when a student transitions to either of those two qualifications. Um, so I don't think it will affect anything. Do commercial students have the option to take synoptics if employers would like them tested in that way? I don't know the answer to that one, Shane. Are you? No, actually, I don't. Um, it, it's a good question. I suppose the main reason that, um, without getting too complex, but the main reason that the you still have to take the synoptic as an apprentice is because if you was doing the level three apprenticeship, ironically, the AAT qualification is not a mandatory qualification, and therefore you have to use that synoptic to test the apprenticeship outcomes. However, because our apprenticeship programmes include the AAT qualification anyway, um, they are being regularly tested. And therefore, there would probably be little benefit, I suppose, to taking the synoptic um, as a commercial student in addition to all the other papers, because it is testing the same stuff. Um, it's just a bit of a quirk with, with the fact that the AAT qualification is actually non-mandatory um, within the apprenticeship. So. But I can go away and I can find out for definite um, because I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to confirm either way. No, I suppose it would just yeah, it would just be a case of determining whether the AT would let I suppose almost us purchase that assessment for for, for a candidate really. Um, but in terms of what what we offer, um, because the synoptics will still be um, um, being offered for for apprentices, then if that is possible, then we'd be more than happy to take commercial students on the courses. Um, by all means. Any other questions at all? Okay, well, um, I'd like to thank you for your time tonight then. So as I said, um, we will um, we'll send out, I, I'm happy to send out the slides. And um, I think ha having registered, you'll automatically get a recording of the, um, the webinar anyway. So um, thank you very much for your time this evening. If you've got any other questions, then um, feel free to contact either Shane or myself and, um, and we're happy to give you any feedback that you might need. All right, thank you very much.
Have a good evening all. Bye-bye.